Can Alex Ovechkin get a goal number 801 against Gordie Howe's former team? Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. And when you're on YouTube, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up or leave some comments. It really helps grow the channel. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter it's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we'll talk about Gordie Howe and Alex Ovechkin as Ovechkin chases down Gordie Howe. Ovechkin currently sits at 800 goals. Wouldn't it be something if he was able to score goal number 801 or 802 against his former team, the Detroit Red Wings? I think that would make a very interesting story. We'll talk about that tonight. Then a little bit, li- a little bit later in the show, we will talk about Connor McMichael and how he is playing in Hershey. I think that he might be poised for bigger and better things. We'll talk about that. But just to get it going here, we'll talk about how your Washington Capitals played over the weekend and a kind of an unsuspecting person at getting a hat trick. Uh, Eric Gustafson, I mean, if you had bet that Eric Gustafson would have scored a hat trick against the Toronto Maple Leafs, you should be spending more and betting more in Las Vegas because you would win millions. I would not have thought that was the case. Uh, He got all three goals that he has scored this entire season uh, against the Maple Leafs. So what a really kind of interesting story there. There was a hat trick Saturday night at Capital One Arena, but it wasn't you-know-who. It was actually one of the least likely Washington Capitals to do it. Eric Gustafson writes The Athletic. The defenseman scored his first, second, and third goals of the season, and Charlie Lindgren stopped 22 of his final 23 shots he faced as the Capitals secured a 5-2 to victory over Austin Matthews in the Toronto Maple Leafs. And You know, given all credit where credit's due, I knew it was going to be a tough game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. As we know, you know, they are playing very well. We can subtract the last game, of course, because they didn't play that well. But it was kind of bittersweet, I guess, that the Capitals were able to pick up what I'm going to call a pretty huge victory against their former netminder, Mr. Inconsistency, Ilya Samsonov. And, you know, again, giving credit where credit's due. Ilya Samsonov has been playing pretty well, uh, save this last game uh, for the Maple Leafs this year. And, you know, honestly, I wish him nothing but the best, but it was kind of proof in the pudding, if you will. This is why we got rid of Ilya Samsonov, or we didn't give him a qualifying offer was because he he is consistent. That was kind of the book on Ilya, is he could string together wins and then just totally fall flat on his face. And uh, Charlie Lindgren, our backup netminder, he was the one that saved the day. And, you know, we, I think we can kind of start taking that tag back up netminder. I know that it's still Darcy's job is number one, but it's still my contention, my belief that the net is Charlie's until he proves otherwise that it shouldn't be. But it was an interesting uh, game as well for the Capitals as their backup netminder, Hunter Shepard, wasn't able to play and Zach Fukali got called up. So we are really kind of putting to test the limits of the Washington Capitals goalie depth. I mean, I know that uh, it wasn't called for and that Charlie was able to play the whole game, but in any event, it would have been interesting if Zach Fukali got called into the game. I know he's played on the big team before, but, uh, you know, again, just a little bit interesting to see how we're kind of going down the depth chart a little bit for the Caps here. Washington has now won six of its last seven games and earned at least one point um, 11 of, of 15 games to ca- to claw back into contention for a playoff berth. It's been a mountain coach, Peter Lavulette said. It's nice to push into that second wild card spot, but your eyes are always looking up the mountain. Where can you get to next? It's been a long journey, but it has gone to continue to push upward. You know who it is, of course, Alex Ovechkin, who stayed at 800 career goals for the second game in a row. 
And, you know, I hope it's not one of those situations for Alex Ovechkin where he's kind of getting caught up in his own head thinking to himself, you know, I got to score a goal. I got to score a goal um, because that's not a good uh, position for him to be in because he should be able to just kind of score it naturally, organically. It shouldn't be that he's trying to force it. And, you know, to a certain extent, I think with all the media kind of surrounding him, it's kind of hard for him to concentrate on winning games. He's more concentrated on getting 801 and 802 and just kind of moving past the whole Gordy Howe thing. So I think if there could be some wise advice here, it would be just to kind of give Alex Ovechkin a little room here and uh, not put the pressure on him so much. Or when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? That is probably not going to help the situation. The Caps captain was active, though. He had a few good scoring chances and recorded a team high six hits. And guys, if you did not see the hit where he pushed the player right into the Capitals bench, right off the ice, totally in a highlight reel body check of Connor Timmins. It is one for the ages. I've seen it happen before, so I know it's not the first time it's happened. But wow, there was no mistaking that hit. He he pushed him in and pushed him down like he was pushing him into a dumpster. Uh, it was something else. I don't know what brought the ire of Alex Ovechkin against him. And uh, maybe there was some chirping going on. Maybe he was just lit up and was trying to let out some aggression. But in any case, uh, Timmins was on the receiving end of, uh, you know, some pretty bad smack down there. Connor Timmins, who he sent over the dasher board and into the home team's bench afterward, the capacity crowd serenaded Ovechkin with chants of OV, OV, OV. And uh, the look of fear on Jensen's face, um, it looks like he was the one that was sitting right next to where that happened. And he was like, you know, kind of at this look like he was right next to a car crash or something. It was quite a thing to observe there. But in any event, it was kind of a fun thing to see it happen. And, um, Again, if there was some chirping going on, maybe the lesson learned is don't poke the bear, the bear in this case, Alex Ovechkin. I didn't notice anything with him, Laviolette said, asked if he sensed that the chase is at all weighing on number eight. It's going to come. We don't talk about it much. We don't focus on it. We focus on the game and the team concept. We focus on the power play and the structure. We focus on five on five and what we do. And inside of that, at some point, it'll come. The big thing I always talk about is the process. Just play the game the right way and good things will happen. Ovechkin's next chance will to catch or pass Gordy Howe will be tonight against the Red Wings, and what a kind of significant moment that would be, and we'll talk about that later in the show, is if he's able to do it against Gordy Howe's former team. There was some bad news in the game, however, as T.J. Oshie, Yes, TJ Oshie. I mean, if you don't know, where, what do you think I'm going to say next year? Do you think I'm going to say he scored a goal or do you think I'm going to say he got injured? If you answered the second one injured, you are correct. Um, it just seems like he is prone to the injury bug. Why is because he plays bigger than he is all the time. Um, and, you know, he does play the best. The Capitals do play the best when he's on the ice, but he has got to stay healthy. And in this particular case, I'm not sure what happened. It looked like he was back checking there. And then all of a sudden it was like a, his something in his legs cut out and he had to go for the bench. So it wasn't, uh, you know, any observed significant collision or anything like that. Like I said, it looks like he was back checking and uh, it looks like, you know, some probably muscle strain or something. I don't know. But in any event, it was bad enough that he had to leave the game. Oshie pulled up lame on a second period back check and after uh, propping himself up with his stick on the bench for a, a few minutes, he headed to the dressing room. He did not return. So this is definitely not optimal for the Capitals to be out uh, of TJ Oshie's services once again. It just seems like whenever he comes back, the Capitals play well. Well, now they're going to have to deal with him out of the lineup. How long is he going to be out of the lineup? I guess that remains to be seen. He walked gingerly as he left the arena. The team said he suffered an upper body injury. It looked like a leg to me, but I'm going to trust the training staff. Because of his history, there is always a concern, Laviolette said. Asked if the latest injury was re related to the one that caused Oshie to miss 11 games earlier in the season. Laviolette said, I am not sure. Just the way he left, he's got some sort of upper body injury. We'll go back and assess it and see how he is Sunday. I don't know if it's identical or exact, but I think because of his history, you you are just a little bit more concerned about it. The Caps are 2-6-3 and three this season when Oshie is out in 22-22-8 without him since 
Oshie's departure put a little bit of a damper on one of the Caps' biggest wins of the season, a key triumph powered by a player who came into the game without a single goal in his previous 31 contests. Gustafson first opened the scoring midway through the uh, opening period. His second goal extended Washington's lead to 3-1 to one earlier in the second, and number three came early in the third period, and it put the Caps ahead 5-2, to two, and the game came out of the Leafs' reach. Scoring the first goal as a Cap to Got a little hatty. That's pretty unbelievable, Gustafson said. It's not going to happen too often, he added with a laugh. It was just a great feeling, but obviously it was a great win too. The game also saw goals by Trevor Van Riemsdyk and Garnet Hathaway also scored for the Caps while Sonny Mulatto added three assists one game after being sidelined with an illness. Milano now has seven assists in his last seven games. So just... That pickup by the Caps and Sonny Milano is really paying off big time, in my opinion. Again, he was a guy that was picked up on, a, you know, uh, the Calgary F- uh, Flames released him from a PTO uh, professional tryout and the Capitals picked him up and he has done a great job. We've seen a little bit of a better performance from Nicholas Abe Kubel too. He was the one that they uh, picked up uh, from the waiver wire from the Toronto Maple Leaf. So some of these depth players, I'm going to call them, are really kind of starting to pay off and that is a positive sign. But getting that goal scoring from what I'm going to say, not necessarily the marquee name. So when you see goal scoring from another blue liner in Trevor Van Riemsdyk, and then also you saw a goal from fourth liner Garnet Hathaway, just a really great night. That's what I like about this Capitals team is not just getting those top line scoring, but it's getting scoring up and down the lineup and even getting the blue line involved. Those are the games that uh, that really are the best for me because It's great that to see Alex Ovechkin score, you know, a million goals out there. And it's great to see, you know, a lot of these other players. But when you start to see the blue line and that kind of thing involved, those games are the most fun for me to watch. All right. So after the break here, we are going to talk about Connor McMichael and what he's up to in Hershey. We'll talk about that next. Our next partner has a product I use uh, literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted more energy. I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I wanted to see what the hype was about. Now I've been taking it for several months now and it doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has kind of a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to taking each morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, superfoods, uh, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of these things. Now, I personally take it because I have some young children at home. And if you have children at home, you can relate. Sometimes you need a little bit of a boost of energy. It's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything, while still tasting good. It supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of uh, best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. So, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up on the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen today. Make sure to check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day uh, in 20 minutes or less, plus instant reactions, game recaps, and locks on Locked On Take of the Day. Locked On Sports Today, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you find your podcasts. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. In this next segment, we are going to talk about Connor McMichael. And we know that Connor McMichael has had a spot on this team the last couple of years. And then for whatever reason, 
Um, well, there's a couple things. He doesn't get a lot of opportunity to play for one, right? And number two, uh, the time that he is playing in the games, he is not really showing up on the score sheet. And I know what a lot of people say is that, you know, he he's not showing up on the score sheet because he's not given an opportunity. And I hear that. But I think the biggest reason that Connor McMichael is playing in Hershey right now is because there's not a spot for him on the lineup and he would be best served to play in Hershey than to be sitting up in the press box for the Capitals. Uh, so that is why he is down there. And I think that there's probably going to be an opportunity this season that he's going to get called up again if if needed, uh, maybe a, a push for the playoffs or something like that, I, you know, and, uh, you know, kind of like Connor McMichael, and Hendricks Lop here, they just need to be patient because their time is coming. Um, but in the interim, he is doing a really great job down in Hershey. In late November, following a series of healthy scratches to open the 2022-23 season, the Washington Capitals sent Connor McMichael down to the Hershey Bears with hopes that he'd get scoring and produce offensively with more ice time and opportunity. He's done just that so far, writes Washington Hockey Now. Since joining the Bears following a rough six-game stint in D.C., McMichael has been bringing his A game while playing top six minutes, centering the second line and getting time on the power play and penalty kill. As a result, he's gaining more confidence, and it's evident in the way he's on the ice and even when he's celebrating. And, um, you know, I think part of that, too, is I just think that he's probably happy that he's getting an opportunity to play you know, I think to a certain extent, there's got to be a bit of excitement that you get called up to the big team, the Washington Capitals. I finally made it, except that I'm going to spend the most of the time sitting on the bench or I'm going to be spending most of the time up in the press box. I think it's a bit deflating. And I think that ultimately, of course, you would rather be playing night in and night out on the Capitals. But if he's not able to do that, I think that he's adjusting just fine to playing in the AHL, which is still a notable league. The American Hockey League is just one step down from the NHL. So it's not like he got kicked down to a, a beer league or something like that. He is still playing professional hockey. The 21-year-old... Um, excuse me, the 21-year-old is finishing his chances getting flashy and utilizing his speed, stick-handling ability, and hockey IQ that made him a first-rounder in 2019. Though 14 games so far in the AHL, McMichael has five goals and three assists for eight points, and he is averaging .57 points per game, which puts him on pace for 41 points with Hershey this year. His fifth goal of the season came in Sunday's win over the Lay Valley Phantoms off a wicked shot that went top shelf. It was a pretty sweet goal. If you guys haven't seen it, it's on YouTube. Check it out. I think it's a big part of my game right now. It's kind of working on different situations in the game. Penalty kill, power play, up by a goal, down by a goal. So I've been good and experiencing a lot of it so far, McMichael said of his return. I've been happy with my minutes. I've been playing and how I've been able to contribute to the team. I'm looking to keep that up. And I think the Hershey Bears, and I think that the Capitals are observing him, of course, to see what he has. And, you know, the proof's in the pudding for Connor McMichael. He is a great player, like everyone says, when he's given his opportunity. And he's been given his opportunity in Hershey. And I understand that, you know, Hershey and the Washington Capitals is not an apples for apples comparison. But in any event, it's one step down from the, uh, the National Hockey League, and he is doing a great job in Hershey, and we hope that he has that continued success because it is still my belief that at some point he is going to have a job on the Capitals. It's just really a matter of when. A big thing for me to help contribute to this team, we got a really good squad down there, he added, saying that he's not fixated on when he'll return to the Capitals. I think that's... Uh, what we can do, something special right now. My goal is to help this team win, go far in the playoffs, and we'll see what happens. And, you know, I think that that's even just a, goal, a good goal for him to have is just to not, like he said, fixate on being on the Capitals or playing in the National Hockey League. He should try to fixate on improving his game and helping the Hershey Bears make their push for a Calder Cup. Um, if you think of some of the great capital players, they cut their teeth down in the hurt with the Hershey Bears in the AHL. I mean, look at John Carlson and Braden Holpe and Tom Wilson and all those players. That is where a lot of those players got their start. 
And I know some of them spent, you know, longer time down there than others. I know that Tom Wilson uh, didn't spend a ton of time there. He played primarily on the Capitals. But in any event, uh, there are some players that have played there for quite a few years. And then some of them, some of them get their opportunity. Some of them don't. But in any event, I do think that this is where uh, Connor McMichael is best served right now. There is not a spot for him on the roster right now. And ultimately, he his real native position is the center position. So, you know, I've heard some people say, well, couldn't they kind of plug him in on fourth line center or fourth line left wing? That's not where his, you know, development is going to improve. He needs um, a lot of minutes, night in and night out. And, you know, playing in Hershey is an opportunity for him to do that. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you got to think about it's not what's best for the team. It's what's best for the player. And ultimately, I think that the Capitals lineup is pretty solid right now, all things considered. Excuse me, I know that TJ Oshie getting injured again is not optimal. But uh, in any event, I think the Capitals lineup in general is pretty good right now, as you can tell by how they've won a bunch of games here. Um, but uh, as far as Connor McMichael is concerned, again, just concentrate on your game in Hershey. Try to help the Bears, help them make their push for a Calder Cup. All of those are good things uh, on your resume as a player. All right, so after the break here, we are going to talk about Alex Ovechkin as he chases down Gordy Howe. Alex Ovechkin now currently sits with 800 goals. Wouldn't it be something if he got goal number 801 against Gordy Howe's former team, the Detroit Red Wings? We'll talk about that next. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. In this next segment, we are talking about Alex Ovechkin's goal chase of Gordie Howe and then eventually Wayne Gretzky. But the interesting storyline for me, and you know, I've heard about this quite a bit as well, is wouldn't it be something if Ovi got his eight, his you know goal eight hundred one or possibly eight hundred two? against Gordie Howe's former team, the Detroit Red Wings. As Alex Ovechkin chases history, the Detroit Red Wings hope it doesn't happen at their expense. Containing Ovechkin not only increases the Red Wings' chances of stopping their five-goal slide of 0-4-1, it would be a sort of hat tip to the all-time great Detroit Gordie Howe Coach Derek Lalonde said Ovechkin has 800 goals, one behind Howe, who ranked second in the NHL history. He can tie or pass Mr. Hockey on Monday when his Washington Capitals face the Red Wings at Capital One Arena. It is going to be an excellent game, this article in M Live here. I don't think as an organization we want to see him second overall on Monday, so hopefully our guys will take that a little personal, what Gordie Howe means to this organization, and try to push the milestone back for another opponent. Isn't that something we've heard? I think I heard that against uh, the Dallas Stars as well. Ovechkin's hat trick at Chicago on Tuesday took him to 800 goals. He has since failed to score against Dallas and Toronto. As disappointing as our game was, 6-3 to three loss to the Ottawa Senators. As coaches, we brought it up this morning. We were kind of hoping for Ovi to score a couple last night versus Toronto, Lalonde said. But I think that's awesome, and it makes it exciting for the guys to be competing in a moment like that. And, you know, I know that obviously he does, the Detroit Red Wings don't want Ovechkin to score that goal against you know, their uh, former team, Gordie Howell's former team, but to be attached to such a great moment in history, I think you guys need to adjust your perspective a little bit. Ovechkin, 37, is 94 goals short of Wayne Gretzky's all-time record of 894. It's pretty amazing what he's doing, David Perron said. In a way, I think he's kind of cheering for him a little bit. As far as down the road, if he can beat that record, it would be a cool thing for the league. Certainly a record that 10 years ago no one saw coming could ever be broken. Ovechkin has 292 career power play goals, including seven this season. The Red Wings worked extensively on special teams in Sunday's practice. They have allowed six power play goals in their past four games, including three against the Senators. Sometimes it's funny. He's just kind of standing there and he gets the puck on one shot. 
Red Wings goaltender Vili Husso said, we need to do a good job on the PK. It's going to be a good challenge for us. Ovechkin has 20 goals and 15 assists in 33 games this season, his high 18th. He changed his style uh, a little bit from earlier in the, his career. He was running around a lot more back then, being more physical, Perron said. He still does that at times in playoffs. I've seen the other side a couple hits, and it's not easy, but he's also found a way to be consistent. And if you think about it, Alex Ovechkin, if he continued to be kind of that bull in the china shop, uh, I don't think that, you know, perhaps his career would have lasted as long as it has. You know, I've talked about a physical game, but I want I don't want to do that if that means Alex Ovechkin is injured in, you know, on the IR. That is not how he's going to catch Gordie Howe. That is not how he is going to catch Wayne Gretzky. So he needs to have that physical game, but not crazy where he's just smashing every guy in sight into the boards, or I think he's going to have a hard time catching Wayne Gretzky said uh, Lalonde just amazing his approach it's an honor to be competing against him in this league I think our guys look at it the same an example like that producing at the same level his approach he plays so hard Jakob Vrana in his second full practice since exiting the players assistance program skating with a blue non-contact contact jersey the other players on the team said they are excited for the opportunity to play a, against Alex Ovechkin in a very historical moment and it is a historical moment if you take a look at it regardless if he scores it against your team or not to be attached to such a great moment in history um, and just the storylines that are associated with Alex Ovechkin getting goal number 801 or 802 or dare I say 803 against Gordy Howe's former team, the Detroit Red Wings, that would be something. And considering how the Red Wings are playing, it's not outside the realm of possibility. I definitely do think it is possible. I just think that it would be a really special moment for him to do that against his former team. Um, I know the Red Wings don't look at it that way, but it is going to be a must-watch must game tonight as the Washington Capitals take on Gordy Howe's former team, the Detroit Red Wings. It's a must-watch game. I really do think it is going to happen. As you guys notice, I'm still wearing the Ovechkin jersey here. I'm going to continue to wear this jersey unlaundered. Is a kind of a sign of solidarity until he passes, not till he gets, uh, not till he gets 801, not till he gets, you know, I want him to pass Gordie Howe. So I'm going to continue to wear this as just kind of, you know, a, a rally jersey, if you will, until Gordie, until Alex Ovechkin can finally pass Gordie Howe. All right, once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. It is going to be such an interesting game Monday night, isn't it? Tonight, as the Capitals take on the Detroit Red Wings. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen today. Now make your second listen, Locked On Sports Today. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around sports world in 20 minutes. Get the analysis and opinions before anyone else, our local and national experts and insiders. Locked on Sports Today, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you find your podcast. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked on Capitals, where it's your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.